I seem to think you hook and land a lot more fish with a medium heavy action type rod in this situation. You know, there's definitely a little bit of a bite that can be hard to detect sometimes. So you don't want something that's real whiffy. There's one right there. That feels like a better fish. Decent one. Sitting right on the weed edge. Try to fall down. He's right there. It's a healthy one. Come here, come here. It's not a bad one. Beauty. The VMC red line right in the top of the mouth, right where you want them. It's a chunk. Coontail fish. It's a good start. There's what they're sitting in there. Just nice lush green coontail. They call it coontail because the very tip of it, top of it, looks like a raccoon's tail. So it kind of grows up in like a Christmas tree and it plumes out from there. Midsummer, the fish just love that stuff. And they're not going to be everywhere in it. You, you definitely got to poke around and, and fish to find them. And on this particular lake, we don't have a lot of rock to kind of pinpoint certain areas along the weed edge. So you just get on a, on a contour and just go. When you run into one fish, there's usually going to be at least a couple there. Sometimes you can find a big wad of them, but there's usually going to be more than one. So it's worth it to put your trolling motor on spot lock, sit there for a bit and make multiple casts. And if they slow down on one type of bait, you know, pick up some other ones, Nico rig, Ned, jig worm, that sort of thing and try and really milk that school for all it's worth. In this body of water, we've got coontail, there's some milfoil, and then we've got, I don't even know what it is, it's kind of a stringy type of grass. This is coontail here. And that's really what we're targeting And that coontail is generally gonna grow, you know, in that, you know, dependent on the color of the water, we got some green color in here. So right now it's only coming out to about I'd say 10 to 13 foot. You can see we're in 13 here. And on our 360, you can see that weed edge really well. So we've got our bare open bottom here, probably a mix of sand and muck. And then this fluffier stuff with the, you know, there's some holes in it too. That's your coontail. And I'm just trying to stay off that edge, throwing up into it, letting the bait fall down and popping it free. And so I'm not only seeing on my 360, but then on live, you know, I can pan around and also see the edge. So we pan out to the left. We got a few smaller sprigs of grass, but for the most part, the thick grass is, you know, right in front of us and here's our edge. We're not far off the edge right now. So, um, you know, live really helps us dial in the edge. 360, we can see it but live really gives us a, a visual of how far off of it we are. And in the past with 2D to fish a weed edge, we had to constantly be meandering in and out, in and out till we'd see that grass below the boat. And now with live, you can actually just stay off of it a lot easier by panning around and finding that edge versus getting right up on top of it. So here's some of the stringer grass that's also down there. Um, it seems like, that coontail, when you can find it real clumpy and thick, is where they want to be right now. So, you know, on on live, it can be tough to decipher between that stringy grass and, and the coontail. So it's honestly a matter of just going and fishing. And when you're hooking the coontail or you hook a fish and a bunch of that coontail floats up, then you know you're in the right area. But um, the beauty of it is when you do find those fish, in somewhat of a, a nothing looking stretch is generally straight. Usually you had those fish to yourself um, because it doesn't really stick out much on a map. There's a few little points here and there, but to actually, there's another one, determine where the coontail is, is, you know, that takes a lot more work. Found a good group of them in this coontail. They're pretty loaded up right here. Nice fish. There 
There we go. Another beauty on the Texas rig. It's right on that coontail edge again. Another good, probably three, high three pound fish. Get them back. You know, typically my progression on these areas, you know, I'll throw the biggest baits first, generally on these weed lines until they quit biting it. Um, you know, when they quit biting it, you're probably gonna have to go more finesse, drop shot, Nico, you know, typical Minnesota jig worm is always a good bet too. Um, but I try and stick with these bigger baits as long as I can until they stop biting it. Sometimes it's a couple fish, sometimes you'll sit here and you'll never have to put it down either. So um, all kind of depends on the day and what's going on. But if you're here to try and catch as many as possible, definitely having, you know, two, three, four different other baits to throw in there is a good bet to really maximize the number of fish you catch out of one school like this. On the map, it might just look like a straight edge, but 360 always tells you a little bit more than what your map might show you. And right here, you can see these dark shadows. There's a spot here, kind of a bare spot here. We've got our edge, then we've got our weed line, but inside those weeds, there's little bare spots. And those are always key areas when you're fishing grass. Um, it's, and those are kind of the needle in the haystack type of spots. It's no different than if you were punching matted grass that's up shallow. A lot of times you're looking for just the smallest minute little holes in the mat. And it's the same thing on a weed edge. Those fish use those open areas as ambush points. And so they're sitting generally, you know, inside the thick grass and something small, you know, falls in that hole. That's when they reach out and grab it. And so those little bare spots in the grass are really important. So you can initially see those bare spots on 360. You know, we've got one right in this general area. And now with live, we can even pan over and see those bare spots as well. So we got a bare one here. Our contour comes up a bit. We've got another somewhat of a lower spot or a bare spot there. So live really helps us pinpoint them. 360 shows us the picture. And then as we pan around, you can really see them on live. Like there's a good one right there. We got a clump of grass here, a clump of grass here, and a, and a nice bare spot there. Um, and they'll use those as the ambush points. And you can see it on 360 too. It's kind of right in this general area. And they're really key. If they're real hard bottoms, you know, the, the bluegills will spawn in those, in those two sometimes. So whenever you get a full moon, um, occasionally, we don't, I don't see it here, but you'll see that honeycomb of the bluegill beds in those bare spots too. And if you see that, that's like, generally guaranteed to have some bass around them. They'll sit around those bluegill beds in the grass and hop out and eat one every so often. And we might not be able to see it visually with our eyes, um, but now we can see it really well with 360 and, and live. <laughs> it never freaking fails. Gosh. Another decent coontail fish. All right. Beauty. Hooked them right where you want them again, right in the snout, the VMC red line. And we just tried the Nico, tried a little jig worm, thinking we could pick up a few more. No bites, first cast with a Texas rig get another good one so i don't know maybe that's what they want today and that's how it can be on these weed line fish you know there might be a certain time today where a different bait fires but it's always good to have a couple options in place sometimes they really get dialed in on one and that's the way it seems this morning seems like the texas rig on the weed line is working today which is just such a staple in a natural lake in the summertime I'm not really flipping it much. I'm more casting it with a, I think this is a quarter ounce. It's a VMC bullet weight. 
kind of feathering it back through the grass instead of really punching down through it. With this coontail, um, it's just so thick and dense and really tough that it can, you know, if you're using a three quarter or an ounce weight, um, you can certainly flip that around in one area. It's just gonna be a little more difficult to work through compared to like a milfoil um, or a cabbage area. I tend to like a little bit lighter weight when I'm throwing around coontail. You can imagine it sinks and kind of almost barely rests on top. And then when you rip it through, it's a lot of times when your bites are gonna come. So it just makes it a little easier to work through these areas with a, li with a little bit lighter Texas rig. And you got to adjust it based on the wind conditions. You know, if you got heavier wind, you'll probably have to throw a heavier weight, but Right now we've got pretty light winds. So this quarter ounce is coming through there pretty well. So make a you know medium to long cast, let it sink down and settle on top of that coontail and rip it free. And a lot of times they're gonna bite it on the initial fall or as you're snapping it up out of there. Almost kind of like you'd fish a, you know, a swim bait or a hair jig or a football jig on a ledge. You hear a lot of guys, um, stroke a jig or stroke a hair jig off the bottom. That's kind of what we're doing here with this craw tube, you know, in Texas rig a lot, you know, if they don't eat it on the fall, a lot of times they're eating it when you're popping it up off of that grass. You know, my setup has always been a seven to seven four, just a medium heavy fast rod. Um, something with, you know, good backbone, but you don't need a broomstick when you're laying into these fish, I seem to think you hook and land a lot more fish with a medium heavy action type rod in this situation. I'm throwing 17 pound to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I like fluorocarbon, all fluorocarbon in this situation. Once again, um, it's got a little bit of stretch more so than braid, but I feel like I just land more fish with all fluorocarbon. If I was flipping and pitching and, you know, shorter line casts to this stuff, I think a braid to fluorocarbon setup would be better. But when you're making these longer casts and you're using those big sweeping hook sets, I think that fluorocarbon is a better deal. And, you know, as you're retying throughout the day too, you're not having to tie on new leaders. Um, so it's just a little bit more efficient for me. And then just a higher gear ratio reel that, you know, seven to one, eight to one gear ratio reel um, is preferred. You can pick up line a lot faster when those fish make a surge towards you when you do get a bite. And then just an extra wide gap hook with a, this is a quarter ounce weight, uh, but pretty simple setup. Most people have a seven to seven, four medium heavy rod. Um, you can do a lot with that rod. You can throw a bunch of different stuff with it. And that's just always been my preferred setup for throwing these Texas rigs on weed lines. It's really effective. I think your bite to land ratio is, is great with this setup. Um, you know, too heavy of a rod, I think you blow too big of a hole in those fish's mouth when you set the hook. You know, you don't lose many fish with this setup. And you can still drive that hook home pretty good with a, with a medium heavy. It's not, you know, you're not throwing a noodle. That is my preferred setup for throwing a light Texas rig on these weed lines.